Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and as always I have a couple of announcements and the first one is um, tonight I'm doing a little free workshop. We do one of these a month, free workshops on topics that people are interested in and tonight the topic is why won't people listen to me. Uh, many of you have embraced our ideas about diet and health and um, you really want other people to listen and you approach them with all good intention. Many of us are very passionate about this type of thing, only to be turned off. And sometimes the worst part about it is it's the people closest to you who choose not to listen. So I'm going to talk about how to approach people in a way that may make them just a tiny bit more predisposed to listen to what you say and even take action based on some of your ideas. So that's free. That's tonight. You can call our office or email me and we'll get you signed up for it. Second thing is that it's mid-November, it's time to get registered for winter semester already, which is sounding almost ridiculous, can't believe it's here. Um, one important thing, the Diet and Lifestyle Intervention course, um, we're offering that winter semester, and we have some great packages that go with it, certification courses, some of which are new. I'm, ha I'm introducing next year uh, children's health, men's health, cancer, uh, allergies and asthma, gastrointestinal disorders, and forming and maintaining optimal habits. Those are going to be some new uh, certification courses and then some great additional courses as part of the nutrition educator program that will be offered winter semester too. So if you are interested in getting some education with us, um, either a single class or earning a diploma, um, send me an email at pampopper at msn.com. We can set up a time to talk about it. That's sometimes the best thing to do. Just have a conversation, figure out what you're interested in, and then I can tell you what I think we can do for you or refer you someplace that I think can help you achieve your goals. All right? Okay. Um, let's talk about calcium. According to the MESA, it's called Multi-Ethnic Study of Atherosclerosis Study, eating foods that contain calcium does not increase the risk of cardiovascular disease, but taking calcium supplements can increase the risk of coronary artery calcification, or CAC. Researchers determined that while high total calcium intake was associated with a decreased risk of atherosclerosis when the calcium came from food, the opposite was true, and the risk of CAC was 22% higher for participants who took calcium supplements as compared to those who didn't. So eat the calcium in food, has a protective effect. Eat the calcium in supplements or fortified foods, it has a health-destroying effect. According to senior author Dr. Erin Michos from Johns Hopkins School of Medicine, she says, I think most of the cardiology community has already bought into the fact that there's no cardiovascular benefit for these multivitamins or supplements, so most cardiologists won't be recommending or prescribing calcium supplements. The larger question, though, is whether if they have patients on them, they're going to tell them to stop. She went on to say, everybody agrees that dietary calcium seems to be safe, but I personally think the data for supplements is inconclusive and that the body metabolizes calcium very differently when it comes from supplements versus diet. My gosh, this woman could work here and give lectures. Michos also said that in addition to increasing the risk for coronary artery calcification, calcium supplements increase the risk of kidney stones, bloating, constipation, and many other conditions. This is not the only study that has shown that taking calcium supplements increases the risk of cardiovascular disease. A meta-analysis of 15 randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled studies showed that taking calcium pills increases the risk of heart attack by about 30%. The researchers noted that, quote, the widespread use of calcium supplements means that even a small increase in the incidence of cardiovascular disease could translate into a large burden of disease in the population. The likely adverse effects of calcium supplements on cardiovascular events suggest that a reassessment and the role of calcium supplements in the prevention and treatment of osteoporosis is warranted. And this is very true. Most people really aren't taking calcium supplements because they think that they're going to protect um, themselves against uh, cardio cardiovascular disease. They're taking them because they think that it's needed for bone health. Calcium supplements and calcium fortified foods are promoted that way, but neither are needed in order to meet daily calcium needs. In fact, I've been saying for years and more and more people are getting on this page that calcium recommendations are highly overblown. The average person um, can, can deal with 400 to 500 milligrams of calcium a day is enough, and um, intake above that much doesn't necessarily improve bone health. And it is so easy to get that amount of calcium from food. Um, one 
example I use is that an orange, medium-sized orange, has 110 to 120 milligrams of calcium. Well, most people don't think of oranges as being high calcium foods, and 110 or 120 cal milligrams of calcium doesn't sound like very much if you're trying to take in 1,500 milligrams of calcium a day, but we're in, when we're in that 400 to 500 milligrams per day range, 120 sounds actually pretty good, doesn't it? I mean, you have 20 to 25 percent of your of your needs. So anyway, the bottom line, it is better to get your calcium from food. In fact, it is better to get all of your nutrients from food than it is to get them in supplements. Okay, so let's move on to another subject. My favorite subject, why not to take drugs? So here's one, according to a new study, two drugs most often prescribed to prevent migraines in adults, and those are um, amitriptyline and topiramate, are no more effective than placebo when we prescribe them to children. The study was conducted at 31 sites. It included 321 patients between the ages of 8 and 17 who were suffering from migraines. And uh, the kids were randomized to take amitriptyline, topiramate, or placebo for 24 weeks. The trial was stopped early because the results were crystal clear. The placebo was the most effective of the three categories. 61% of the kids who took placebo had a reduction in headache days of 50% or more, while 52% of the kids taking amitriptyline and 55% of those taking topiramate had a 50% reduction in headache days. The difference between the groups in school days or social activities missed, not statistically different. The side effects of the drugs, however, were significantly different. Some kids experienced things like fatigue and dry mouth and tingling in their hands and feet. One child taking topiramate tried to commit suicide. Three taking amitriptyline developed severe psychological issues. One said he wanted to hurt himself and one wrote suicide notes and ended up being hospitalized. Well, the FDA approved topiramate in 2014 for the treatment of adolescents between the age of 12 and 17. And note that the kids in this study that I just reported, some of them were younger. They were as young as eight years old. But the drug topiramate was, was approved for kids between the age of 12 and 17 who had fewer than 15 headaches per month. Lead researcher Dr. Scott Powers said that he hoped the FDA would reconsider that decision. Uh, but the, uh, the response from other doctors just blew my mind. I mean, this Dr. Eugene Schnitzler, he's professor of pediatrics and neurology at Loyola University School of Medicine. He says he doesn't feel obligated to tell patients that the drugs are no better than placebo. So here's what he plans to say. He says, I'll simply say, we have data in adults that it's effective, but less convincing data in children and adolescents. In what universe is the evidence I just told you less convincing? The drugs were useless and harmful, and the placebo was not only slightly better, but not harmful. You know, for, I think Schnitzler is the kind of doctor that health, Wellness Form Health and I are trying to um, get out of business. And I think the more people know about informed medical decision making, the more likely we are to purge the profession of doctors who continue to be this ignorant and, and tone deaf as to the needs of their patients. I mean, I, I think a lot of my colleagues sometimes are just ethically uh, compromised. I don't know how else to put it. Well, this is an issue with migraines. An increasing number of kids have them. For example, about 11% of kids who are 7 to 11 years of age and 23% of 15-year-olds have migraines. Migraine sufferers can have a lot of symptoms, but the most common is a severe headache, often accompanied by symptoms like blurred vision, sensitivity to light, nausea, and vomiting. Many patients can't work or go to school, sometimes for several days when they get a migraine. There are a lot of causes, but both the health status and diet of the patient are important contributing factors. Obesity increases the risk and so does diet. So I think that improved diet resulting in weight loss is a much better way to address migraine, particularly in children and adolescents, than drugs with serious side effects that include suicide risk. I mean, and again, I keep coming back to this pediatrician um, who, professor of pediatrics. This guy is teaching other pediatricians. I mean, you know, this, this makes me angry and also makes me highly motivated. We have got to tell more and more people about this because we can't rely on the medical profession to clean up its own mess. We're going to have to clean it up by withdrawing um, the demand for a lot of these things. So anyway, um, drugs for children to treat migraine, no better than placebo is a take-home point. By the way, many of you ask all the time, gosh, I'd love to see all those references that go with your articles, and you can. All you have to do is subscribe to the Health Briefs Online Library. Articles based on the uh, video clips are posted every week, and you can access the library by calling our office to get a passcode. 
That's all for today. Pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it, and I'll be back to you on Thursday with more news.